it was puzzling me that on one side we have this kind of integrative form of altered state of consciousness when we can get experiences, uh, insights which have really an uh, adaptive value. And on the other hand, we have a neurochemical agent which is acting on the serotonergic receptors. So where is the bridge between those two? That's an important task for us in the near future. I see one step toward understanding this. On one hand, I told you that integrative type of altered state of consciousness is probably related to neural binding, a different kind of neural binding what we use in ordinary state of consciousness. So the, the gap could be filled, so one step toward so one step from the pharmacological action toward neural binding can be gamma synchronization. So it's possibly that acting on the serotonergic receptors, and Carson has a very nice comprehensive idea that all type of hallucinogens, which use totally different uh, receptors, not serotonin, but uh, NMDA or sigma opioid receptors. Finally, they act on GABA interneurons in the thalamus. And thalamus is very important in this gamma oscillation. So very probably that the final common pathway of hallucinogenic action is a change in gamma oscillation as a result in uh, this change in neuronal binding. And DMT. What is good at DMT and within this serotonin way of action that it's very safe, we, know, uh, we don't even know the lethal dose. And besides doing this, uh, the serotonin action has an important pro-social effect. I cannot tell this about other type of hallucinogens which are using, for example, sigma opiate or, or muscarinic action. You know, muscarinic action can, be, can cause uh, altered state of consciousness of the di disorganized type, delirium. But DMT is absolutely free of that. <laughs>